Hi guys, Peter Finch here and I'm joined by Carl Morris and we are going to be doing an unparalleled putting series here on YouTube on the lost art of putting. Here's what you can expect in the coming videos. It's what you do. So hopefully that has whetted your appetite about the videos to come. But the first thing we need to do is introduce Carl. Now, Carl, do you want to just explain, first of all, a little bit about yourself and then about the book? Because this is what this video series is actually based on. Yeah, it's great to be with you, Peter, um, first of all. And uh, certainly over the last 25 years or so, I've been fortunate to work with some of the best players in the world as a, as a performance coach. My own background was as a failed player. Uh, and I look back on that time now as a time of learning. But basically what we're going to be doing is exploring the whole art of putting because our belief is that myself and Gary Nicol, who wrote the book, is that we're kind of drowning in some science. Mm -hmm. There's an awful lot of technology, there's an awful lot of information out there, which is great, it has its part to play, but when you get it on the golf course and you really need to, it's all about the art of rolling the ball into the hole. So that's really what I want to explore with you. Now this video is all going to be about creating your putting story, but before we get into that guys, if you hit that like button and comment below, create my story, you'll be in with a chance of winning a copy of this book, which has been kindly being donated by Carl. So make sure you like the video, go into the comments and put create my story. Also, if you do want to binge watch this entire series, you can click the link here and you can also go into the description below where the playlist is available. So the first thing we are going to be talking about is how to create a story. So with this car, I mean, what, what is a story? How do you create it? Why, why is it important? I think that's the most important thing, Peter, to sort of recognise that we're basically, as human beings, we're all just a bunch of stories. And the thing with a story is if you repeat it enough times, guess what? You, you start to believe it. Yeah. Now we're talking particularly about putting here, and putting is a great example about how we construct stories. Okay. There's something in our brain called the thinker and the prover, and basically what the thinker thinks, the prover aims to prove. Okay. So if I if I'm if I think I'm a poor putter, guess what? My prover is constantly looking out for okay. is evidence to back that up. And one of the best ways you can back up the fact that you're a bad putter is when you're out on the golf course, is miss one, and the classic reaction of here we go again, and you start giving off and sounding off, and all of the things that, all the histrionics that we see people do on the golf course. What we need to remember is one of the most powerful factors in the story, or your story, is emotion. Yeah. If you put a lot of emotion into something, both good or bad, that will glue the story together. Okay. So you can, con you can look at this and think, how much with putting, you know, misery loves company, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. at, at the professional level, how many times yeah. have you heard good players say, oh, you know, I went out there and I knocked it on 16 greens, but I put it awful. It's almost like they can't wait to tell you, can they? You know? I'm not, I'm not saying that I, I'm not saying that I not do not saying that. you've indulged in that at any point. And, and the converse is true. I mean, you know, the number of times I've heard it on tour over the years, it's almost like they'll say, oh, such and such a body. He's not much of a ball striker, but he's a blade merchant. He holds yeah. everything. Almost as though being a good putter is cheating. And, and, <laughs> and probably one of the best examples I've ever heard about somebody who understood the power of the story. Do you remember the, the great coach Harvey Pennick who wrote a fantastic book called The Little Red Book? Yeah. He was a you, famous coach from America. Yeah. yeah. You talked and, about and, going to dinner here, aren't you? And, and, the, and, yeah. the, and, the, and the, the Little Red Book really was nothing about the golf swing or anything. Mm. It was a psychology book, 20 years ahead of its time. But, but um, Harvey Pennick's two most famous pupils Tom Kite and Ben Crenshaw. Apparently they sat and had dinner be the night before both of them went out on, on tour mm. for the first time. And I think it was Tom Kite turned to uh, Harvey Pennick and said, Mr. Pennick, if there was one single piece of advice you would give us to have a long career, what would it be? And the old coach looked at them both. He said, make sure that you go to dinner with good putters. Mm -hmm. And what sounds a throwaway <laughs> comment was genius. Brilliant. It was brilliant genius that. because he understood that you know, if you spend time with people who talk about three putting and how miserable they are on the greens and all the rest of it, that story becomes very, very powerful. Yeah. So our belief in the book is that for a lot of people, 
before they've even done anything on the green, the putt's going to be missed because they're carrying the story with them. They're almost yeah. waiting for something to go wrong. And you see it so much, don't you? So with certainly players out on the course, when they miss a putt, you know, they like a short putt, they scream at themselves mm. and like, oh, I knew you'd miss that. You're a terrible putter, you're a terrible putter. Yeah. But oddly enough, when they do hold the putt, it's almost like, well, that should be what happens. And they almost be emotionally numb to that. Yeah. And they don't remember it. They, they get it the wrong way around. Yeah. You know, we put lots of emotion into stuff that we don't want and almost no emotion into the stuff that we do want. And, and, and like I say, when you're getting really emotional about something, you're basically telling your brain, do it again, do it again, do it again. Is that reinforcement? <laughs> That's reinforcement yeah. of the story. So, you know, one of the things that we, we, we want people to do is you can't, just, you can't just create a new story in the sense that, you know, you sit under a tree and you close your eyes and chant that you're a wonderful putter. That, that doesn't really work, because oh. I tried it for a number of years. <laughs> but, but what you can do is make a decision that you are going to change the story. Mm -hmm. You're going to change the story by adopting a set of principles that say, I'm going to actually learn how to be good on the greens. I'm going to learn how to react better. I'm going to learn better drills. You know, the fundamental principle that we have is that if what you're doing is working, keep doing it. If you're a good putter and you have a set of systems and you work on certain things, whatever you do, keep doing it. But if you've been trying something for about 10 years and it ain't been working, chances are the 11th year is not going to make any difference. <laughs> and the old Einstein <laughs> quote, isn't it? De definition, definition of, of insanity. insanity. Of insanity. And yeah. With something like that, again, you know, this channel and this series, it's meant to be interactive. So if you consider yourself a good putter, comment below. You know, what are the things that work for you from a psychological standpoint? Because as coaches, you know, me and Carl, we're always looking to learn as well. So comment below, what are these things that work? How do you create that story for yourself of you being a good putter? I know you're going to commit to actually changing your story because it is difficult. And that, is just on that point, sorry to interrupt you there, that you know, that's a great question that golfers don't ask often enough, is what's working? What do I do when I do something well? The classic question most people, you've, you've studied, you've studied thousands of golf lessons, you know, people say, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Hmm. Which has a relevance, obviously, but probably a more important question is what do I do when I'm doing it right? Absolutely, you know, 100%, 100%, couldn't agree more. So guys, what we're gonna do now, just gonna take a very quick break and just have a look at putting grips and maybe what you can do technically to change that and how you can start then creating that story. So when you actually grip the putter, what is a correct grip? Well, that is up for a lot of debate. And in truth, it doesn't really matter. It matters what works. That is the 100% golden rule within putting. Whatever makes that face as square as possible to your intended start line is what is gonna make the most difference. So when we talk about different grip variations, there are three main ones, but there's loads in between you can try. The first one is right below left with a reverse overlap grip. So a classic Tiger Wood style grip, one that Ricky Fowler uses and so many other good putters in the world of golf. The second one is the left hand below right or the cat handed grip. And that is something that Jordan Spieth uses. And again, so many of the great putters in the game today use this grip. Now, the last one we'll talk about is the claw or the pencil grip. That is a Tommy Fleetwood grip. And again, loads of players who use this, Brandon Grace. It's where the right hand sits below the left, but on the side of the grip. Now, this grip is something that a lot of players find will help relieve a little bit of pressure, take a lot of the activity out of the right hand and help guide the stroke a little bit more through with the left. So guys, hopefully you found that interesting about how you can start creating your own story. And remember, like that video, comment below, and if you do want to watch the rest of the videos, there is that playlist in the description. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me in my social platforms, which are all linked in the description below. And of course, hop over and follow Carl and Gary as well. So Carl, awesome stuff, mate. Great to see you, Peter. Thank you. And we'll be seeing you all back here for the second video.